Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian Sigil Basement 2 Super Mini Mail Call. Let's get right into it. Uh, maybe I should have the little cutting tool handy. This comes from Anders in Denmark and it's pretty light. I'm wondering if there's like snacks or something in here. <laughs> delicious, delicious Danish snacks, perhaps. I've been getting a lot of candy um, opening these mail calls, so it's probably not good for my diet. I am trying to lose weight here. <laughs> I put on COVID pounds, COVID kilos for our European friends, and I'm trying to get rid of those, and uh, not always the easiest. All right, I opened it upside down because I didn't want to show the personal information. What do we got here? Ooh, yummy. So, Kranz Kager. Gosh, my Danish pronunciation is obviously garbage. They look like delicious little pastries though. Mm -mm -mm. Can I tell anything on the back? Not really, other than they've probably been making these since 1890. That's about it for what I can tell. Uh, let's see here, we got some chocolate bars, whiskey and nougat, and a cognac one. I, I am of age, everyone. I can drink, luckily, so. <laughs> All right, we got a bag of chips here. Ooh, uh, as if I can read it. I mean, it looks like, uh, yeah, I have no idea but I love chips and it looks like sea salt here. So I am down with that. They've gotten a little flattened, but I think they should be fine. They're not popped or anything like that. Okay, there is a note. And I think that is it. It was just these yummy, yummy snacks. Let's see what the note says. Uh, load quote almond goodies from Denmark run, <laughs> comma from comma Denmark. Dear Adrian, here uh, is a new goodie box from Denmark. I think I remember you talking about uh, marzipan. So interesting, um, we, I'd spell it with a Z or a Z, but uh, yeah, I get what that is. That's the almond candy, like at Christmas time you would have. It's usually pink color. I think it's like really finely ground up almonds. It turns into a little bit of a putty paste. And growing up, we'd have like a little marzipan pig on the table, for instance, and I don't know. I don't love it, but I also do like it. And uh, almonds, I love almonds. And if these are almond flavored, well, that sounds delicious to me. I know you like chocolate as well. So this small goodie box is mostly about marzipan and chocolate. Although here's a bag of organic root chips as well. I know you're interested in chips that are not plain. Yeah, you are definitely spot on. I love crisps, potato chips, these types of things. So good. You know, I like a, I like the plain ones too. They're just sea salt flavor, but I really do prefer when they're flavored with something. I mean, ketchup ones from Canada or whatever, insert awesome, cool flavor. Whenever I travel abroad, I always try to go to every supermarket and buy up all the chips that look really interesting. And I kind of overdo it every trip I'm on, but I haven't been on a trip in a while internationally. So it's nice I have um, international stuff here at home. Thanks to my wonderful viewers. Uh, Andrew says, I hope you like them. If not, you might want to have your wife slash girlfriend try them out. Well, I'm sure I will like them, and but I will share them as well. Anyway, there are three so-called marzipan breads, one with cognac, one with whiskey, and one with nougat. Then there are a pack of marzipan cakes, which is these here. In Danish, it's kranskeg... Yeah, yeah, it's what's written on, on the package here. And I, I just, I can't pronounce it. It's basically a sweet cake based on marzipan. One hint is to eat them with a glass of semi-dry champagne or other sparkling wine. Delicious. So the root chips are made from the following roots, sweet potato, purple and sweet potatoes, parsnip and beetroot. I hope this falls into your liking if I remember correct about marzipan. All right, what's it say on here? Read me. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, I am not going to try these out or these chocolate marzipan things. I am going to, I'm going to get into these chips right now. I just spent a minute looking for my scissors and they were sitting right on my bench here. All right. So, oh yeah, beetroot, uh, which is just in the U.S. called beets. I do love beets though. Oh yeah, those are super delicious. That's, that's great. There's no particular flavor on these, it's just the flavor of whatever the root is and it's got a nice um, salty, crunchy texture to it. Yeah, absolutely delicious. 
So Anders, thank you very much for sending in these Danish sweets. I really appreciate it. And I'm just gonna put these chips off to the side while I open another package. Yes, it's like food. It's, it's like fuel for mail call episodes. All right, let's go on to the next package. I'm gonna have to move the camera back a little bit. This one comes from RR in Massachusetts. And of course I've already misplaced the cutting instrument. Nope, here it is under the sweets from Denmark. So RR from Massachusetts. Let's see what's in the box here. Obviously I'm opening this up backwards here. Oh, all sorts of goodies in here. Okay, that's it for the box. There is a note and a bunch of stuff, which I have piled up on the side here. It says, Adrian Letter, February 2022. There's some white out here, which is like liquid paper. Hi, Adrian. Clothes are the following. One silicon mat to protect the anti-static mat I sent you a while from chemicals. Where's that? Oh, that must be this here. Right. So this is one of those silicone mats. And uh, RR here, I'm pretty sure, is the person who sent me this rubber mat here, well, it's PVC or whatever this is, which as you can notice, it's pretty beat up at this point. Um, I think the problem is this type of material is very susceptible to chemicals, also heat, um, it's scratched up, it's chipped, but you know, it's a patina, right? It gives it a little bit of character. So this mat though, it's quite thick. And the nice thing about this, it's a dark color. And I guess if I grab something like this, uh, video card here, then I can put that on there and I can solder right on here. And that is not going to affect this mat. This is pretty nice to just put on top of uh, this anti-static mat here. So that is cool. Okay. So yeah, to protect anti-static mat, I sent you a while using heat or chemicals. 1X silver tape. Is that this? This like copper conductive tape? I think I saw Shelby on Tech Tangents use some of this to like fix a keyboard or something. If people have good suggestions on how to use this tape, definitely comment down below. What I was curious about is obviously when you peel off the adhesive backing, is that backing conductive? Meaning like, is it an insulating layer between this tape and whatever you're sticking it onto? Or how does this work exactly? Do you have to adhere it to something and then solder this tape onto like a trace on each end? And yeah, so I'd love to know more about the right way to use that. One time solder piece sheet for trace and pad repair. See if it's any good. That is not the silver tape. This is the silver tape right here. So it says aluminum foil tape, one roll. It's kind of similar to that stuff you would use on like a ducting. I think I have a roll of that around here somewhere. Like my air conditioning system has this on some of the ducting, but it's like a miniature version of it. Where's the solder piece sheet? Is that this here? No. No, okay, I'm not sure. I think I should just read through everything that's here and then I look through the stuff here and figure that out. Um, one anti-static foam mat for ICs. There it is right there. Two old Amiga SCSI chips. They're, they're on that um, foam there. We got uh, new old stock DRAM, 40, it looks like 464s. Ooh, those are nice. Those are used on the Commodore 64 shortboard versions. Two chips make up 64K. Uh, one GBS 8200 VGA signal converter board. Yes, I am familiar with those. That has got to be this right here. Uh, there's a triad power supply that goes with it. That's got to be this. 15-pin uh, breakout board for the 2GS. Some other breakout boards for CGA and VGA and whatever. There's a signal generator. So this thing was like an inexpensive, I don't know, arcade video conversion board designed to convert between, I think, like... CGA resolutions, 15 kilohertz video, and to VGA. Now what the open source community has done, they have figured out how to modify this using an, an aftermarket signal generator, and I think like an ESP32, and basically that controls the signal generator. It's not, it's a frequency generator, like a clock generator, and it takes control of this board, and it makes it so much more functional than the built-in junky firmware that's on this thing. So I am sort of familiar with that project. So these are the cables that go between the connectors on here and like, I don't know, Amiga and Breakout, stuff like that. So yeah, ESP32, or sorry, ESP8266. There's a Wi-Fi development board, so that's right here. There's an SI5351A signal generator, so that's the clock generator. 
That's going to be right here. I recognize it because I have used these before. I have a video where I take a Commodore 16, my six, it's actually sitting over there on the shelf, and I use one of these to, and an Arduino, to basically switch between PAL and NTSC on the fly with that machine. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. But yeah, so this little board tied into this, you solder onto some spots, and along with this ESP, you all connect that together. That gives you a web interface for this board and allows you to do a ton more with it. Uh, also included are some ceramic caps and some 100 ohm SMD uh, resistors. I saw those here. They're like little little strips here. That's Those are for mods on this board. Oh, and then videos to watch is listed here. So Amiga to VGA, um, fixing the noise, cheap VGA upscaler. Uh, let's build a cheap retro game upscalers that rivals the open source scan converter and um, RT5X, RetroTink 5X. While that is true from my understanding, I am not sure that it really rivals it. Well, I guess one of the things for me personally, I use the open source scan converter to output HDMI. That is the only way I can capture video for videos. If, I'm, if you see a captured whatever in one of my videos, it's through the open source scan converter and then it's going to an Elgato. This board outputs VGA, as in like normal VGA signal, which would mean I would need to run this into the open source scan converter to then convert that to HDMI. So it doesn't quite work for me, but plugging this when it's modified, I think into a monitor like this or a CRT is going to look good a million times better than this board does um, stock. That board just does a terrible job out of the box. In addition, I don't really think this rivals the RetroTINK, at least for me, because I have the Pro, is I don't think it supports composite video, although I can't remember, to be honest. Now, this does have these inputs right here, these RCAs, but I think that's for RGB with sync on green. I don't think it supports composite, but I'll have to check out these videos for that. I'm not going to be able to assemble this thing at this time, but I'll have a future video uh, where I show this thing running. The letter goes on to say that the hope is the GBS AD200 will solve the issue with the 8-inch monitor not working with 15 kilohertz signals. That is very valid right there. And it's funny, I happen to have the monitor sitting right here from a previous mail call episode that I was working on. But the idea, I guess, could be to take this modified board and maybe somehow stick it on the back, although it's not really room. I guess I could somehow figure out how to make that stick on there. And then that would allow me to actually just use this directly with like an Amiga or something. And that's that's pretty compelling, to be honest. Kind of wish this board was a little bit smaller. My idea originally was with this monitor, and I'm looking over here. Here we go. Here's, a, here's an RGB to HDMI. I was intending to actually permanently attach one of these, which would allow this to work with CGA, EGA, monochrome, stuff like that. But I wasn't like super happy with this monitor, to be honest. I mean, I certainly use it. I, I do like it. Kind of looking for something a little bit better, to be honest, than this. I, I don't know. I have to decide about that. But that's an interesting thought that, yes, this fully upgraded would allow it to work really, really well with like an Amiga or Atari ST digital or uh, analog RGB signals. All right. So let me look through what else is here, because it seems to be a few things that weren't listed. Oh, I see. Okay, I got it. This here is for the 2GS, so you would take one of these harnesses here that go into the GBS board, and then this is a regular 15-pin connector here. So you'd be able to use that with the 2GS. Let's see what else we have here. We have one for just a regular 9-pin, also to connect to these wire harnesses. This is the power supply for it. Hope, I'm pretty sure this thing just runs on 5 volts. So that's what this monitor runs on as well. I, in fact... It's plugged in the USB right now, so I could just like tap into that. These are the two SCSI chips from the Amiga. It's a Western Digital 33C93A. You think these are relatively common? But yeah, a Commodore seemed to use these a lot. I don't think these were used on the PC. Okay, so this is that solder piece for repair welding. Replace additional circling of jump wires to fill the missing solder joint. Restore the original pad and without trace. Ultra thin experience, fixed pin of pad, magic tag. Strong bond, enhanced fixed pin. Uh, 
gotta say, I don't really understand <laughs> what that's trying to say. Wow, look at this. Wow. I don't quite get it. I don't know how this would work. If anyone has any ideas of this, is there like nothing else in here? There's just a little sheet. It's funny, this little thing here, this looks like it's for lamination. Like you would put your business card in here. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It is definitely a lamination thing. I guess it was just originally holding this. Um, I don't really know how to use this. I don't even know what it would do exactly. So yeah, if anyone knows how to use this thing, or maybe there's a video. No, HK Mechanic Company, so Hong Kong, made in China. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. If anyone has any thoughts about this, don't really know how to use it. And same goes for this copper tape and also this silver tape. Yeah, please comment on your thoughts about those and how they're used. What would be a good use for them? Things like that. All right, let's just keep looking here. Okay, there's a breakout cable for VGA. You know, these are pretty helpful, I have to say, <laughs> because it's just really easy to connect screw terminals to um, HD15 there, or there was a, a nine pin and also a 15 pin. So that's pretty sweet. All right, so there are the 4464 RAM chips. Super useful. I, I've recently had a few bad VGA cards come in that use these same chips and I pillaged the chips off there because the card was totally dead and the RAM was still good. So I have a little bit of a stock of these. Uh, more ceramic caps. And here is just a little Apple 2GS RAM card. Oh, wait, what's this here? Micro USB, female. Wait, did I miss something? Is there like a PCB in here? No. Hmm, what am I missing here exactly about this? Apple 2GS RAM card, micro USB. What's this for exactly? I don't think it says anything about it on here. No, I, yeah, I don't see anything here. Oh, here at the bottom here. I also included a mixed bag of components from a project. Okay, <laughs> okay, that makes sense now. So that's cool, that's just some extra parts. Looks like some potentiometers, a couple ICs in there. Those are uh, RAM chips actually, 256K RAM chips by one bit. Very nice. All right, well, cool. Thank you very much, RR, for sending this stuff in. In fact, um, thank you originally for sending in this mat here, which, yeah, is starting to see better days, but um, this uh, heat-resistant thick mat here will be perfect so I can solder right on there and I just won't have to worry anymore. Oh, I was just setting up to take the picture of the thumbnails you can see here, and I found this, I forgot to mention it. It is um, VGA to Amiga converter cable, so obviously it's, Amiga DB23, these really hard to find connectors, and the matching shell to a VGA connector. So this would be for plugging into the GBS, uh, but I could also use it with other monitors or devices that support that type of a signal. So very cool. And again, thank you very much, Anders, for sending in these Danish goodies. Really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's gonna be, I think, it for this mail call. So uh, thanks to everyone who sent stuff in. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my patrons, their names are going up the side of the screen. If you want to become a patron, you can do so at the link in the description below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my second channel, I'd uh, like you to consider doing that. It really, really helps me out. And I guess that is going to be that. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.